This video uses the Cloud Engine 16808 as an example to describe the procedure and precautions for cabinet mounting a device, as well as the principles for selecting a cabinet. We recommend you to purchase the Huawei AA12 cabinet. If you use a different cabinet, make sure that we recommend a standard 19-inch cabinet or a cabinet with a width of 800 millimeters and a depth of 1200 millimeters. Two, the vertical space. The sum of the chassis height, guide rails, and cabling space must be at least 20U in DC-powered installation scenarios and at least 18U in AC and high-voltage DC-powered installation scenarios. 3. Its minimum load-bearing capacity is 383 kilograms. 4. The cabinet's front and rear doors must have a porosity rate of more than 55%. 5. The distance between the front mounting rail and the outer side of the front door must range between 165 and 175 millimeters. And the distance between the rear mounting rail and the outer side of the rear door must range between 200 and 300 millimeters. 6. The cabinet's front door must be equipped with an air filter, but the rear door cannot be equipped with any air filter. If an air filter is installed on the rear door, uninstall it. If you use a non-Huawei cabinet, make sure that its depth is greater than or equal to 1,000 mm. Note that there are many space restrictions if you use a 1,000 mm deep cabinet. Therefore, you need to check for three key issues during the site survey. One. Ensure that the distance between the front mounting rail and the outer side of the front door is at least 150 mm to reserve enough clearance for cabling. In addition, the distance between the rear mounting rail and the outer side of the rear door must be at least 200 mm, while the distance between the front and rear mounting rails must range between 600 and 650 mm to guarantee adequate cabling clearance for the PDU. 2. Make sure that the cabinet has single swing doors at the front and rear. Dual swing doors will occupy certain space inside the cabinet. 3. Keep in mind that door handles also occupy some space inside the cabinet. Therefore, you should keep devices away from them when mounting devices in the cabinet. If there isn't enough space to do so, then you should replace the cabinet. 1. Adjust mounting brackets. Measure the distance A between the front mounting rail and outer side of the front door and adjust the mounting brackets to proper positions according to the mapping between distance A and mounting bracket installation positions. When the depth of the cabinet is between 1100 mm and 1200 mm, install the mounting brackets in default positions 1 and 3 when distance A ranges from 165 mm to 175 mm. Install the mounting brackets in positions 2 and 4 when distance A ranges from 180 mm to 190 mm. Install the mounting brackets in positions 3 and 5 when distance A ranges from 190 mm to 200 mm. 2. Determine the device installation position in the cabinet. Hold the installation template, align the mounting holes on the installation template with those on the mounting rails of the cabinet, and mark the mounting holes for the mounting brackets and expandable guide rails before removing the installation template. Note, Positions of mounting brackets only need to be marked on the front mounting rails, but positions of expandable guide rails must be marked on both the front and rear mounting rails. Ensure the mounting holes on the front and rear mounting rails are on the same horizontal plane. 3. Install floating nuts. Install floating nuts in the marked mounting holes. Note, when cabinet mounting a device, 10 floating nuts are used to secure the mounting brackets and another 10 are used to secure the guide rails, two for the front end and three for the rear end of each guide rail. 4. Install expandable guide rails. A. Adjust the length of the guide rails and place them in marked positions on the mounting rails by the plate at the front end and hook at the rear end. The bottom edges of the guide rails must be aligned with scale lines on the mounting rails. Then secure the guide rails with M6 screws. B. Use M6 screws to secure the air baffle to the guide rails. 5. Install the device in the cabinet. A. Use a pallet truck or lifter to move the device into the cabinet. Note, the chassis is heavy, so lifting it manually is not recommended. If no pallet truck or lifter is available and the chassis has to be moved into the cabinet manually, move the chassis by the load-bearing handles on both sides. 
To avoid damaging the chassis and modules, do not lift or drag the chassis by the handles of any modules in it. Place the rear bottom of the chassis and the guide rails, and then push the chassis horizontally and gently until its mounting brackets are completely attached to the front mounting rails. When pushing the chassis, prevent it from colliding with the captive screws on the mounting brackets. B. Tighten the captive screws on the mounting brackets. Filler panels must be installed in the cabinet's vacant slots to isolate airflows. Otherwise, the device's heat dissipation will be less effective.